can't seem to come up with the hit when they need the hit the most, especially late in games. Yeah. You know, guys in risk, you know, running runners in scoring position, they can't seem to get that key hit. It is uh, it is frustrating for sure. Now, on the on the Yankee side of things, I, I'm going to give you a few numbers here. Oh, right. you got numbers for me this morning. I have three numbers for you. Do you do you pulled out the Sharpie in the notebook today? I did. I had to put wow. these numbers down just to make sure I had it. I could. First of all, let me, let me let me explain something. Watching this on Prime last night, mm-hmm. I don't know how many people lost sound. I lost sound at least four times watching this game on Prime. Yeah. And then somehow the subtitles came on. And I know Were what I'm doing. I'm not, listen, listen. I am not. I, I am tech savvy. I know what I'm doing. I know what's going on. I know where the subtitles. Yeah. The icon is. I know everything. You're not like typical old guy when it comes to technology. No, no, of course not. Typical old guy. Of course <laughs> not. But I'm like, why does it keep going out? Yeah. And maybe, you know, because I, I love listening to Flaherty. You know, Big Head, I could take or leave. Doesn't sure. Matter. But, but Flaherty's great. And. And I'm, I'm kind of noticing it seemed like at least three different times the sound went out. Yeah. And then miraculously, just like we have in this monitor right here in this studio, the, um, you know, the closed caption comes on. I, 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 I don't know what happened last night, but that was really annoying. And these are the numbers you were giving me? <clears throat> this is what? No, but the oh. numbers I've given you, 76, 61, 57. 71. Nope, 76. What? 76. Yeah. 61. Bones. 61. 57. 57. Okay. Those are basically numbers of guys that are that that, that uh, are on the back of Yankee jerseys that, like, what are they doing here? What I, are they doing here? They're just hitting home runs. Yeah, Billy McKinney, right? Jake Bowers. And how about Johnny Brito? Johnny Brito, well, he wasn't hitting home runs, but he was pitching. Yeah, and he got a I mean, standing I, ovation coming off the mound last night. I, I mean, these are the players that are here because of injuries. Mm-hmm. And these players, all three of them yesterday, and and for the most part, as those guys were talking a little bit about it last night, have really held the fort down for the, mo- for the most part. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that they're catching the Rays yet. I'm not saying that they're one of the best teams yet. But, you know, there is there is a thing. There's a winning DNA that's, that, that's kind of understood with this franchise. And it, 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 if you are a Met fan and you compare the two, and you compare the forty-three million dollar salaries. You 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 look at the the players that should be coming through, but don't ever seem to really truly come through when you need them, especially on a consistent basis. Well, especially this year. I mean, it was it was a great regular season till it wasn't last year, and the team really authored one of the best regular seasons we've seen. I know that, uh, but but even, but, it, but this year, year but the, this year is, is right, a, has been uh, awful, and ever and ever since then, it has been absolutely awful. And I'm the one who's been saying I wipe out that 101 win season means absolutely nothing. I've been saying that for months and months. So I'm with you, and I I, I the Yankees have been disappointing in the grand scheme of the sense that. You, you expect them to be in more World Series, win more championships, and that's the expectation that they created for themselves. It's not the expectation that we put on them. They have created that for themselves with the success that they have had and the standard that they have. And I guess the question is now, does the owner still have that standard? Because he's out there saying yesterday that he's confused as to why the fan base is so upset when we are in the second week of June. And if he isn't in tune with his fan base and understanding why they are upset and why they could be disappointed, then I think that's a problem. Now, he did say, I hear them and they're upset and it's my job to listen to that. But, I mean, to to say he's confused as to why the fan base would be upset to me is mind-boggling. I think because it is June and I think it is because they're over 500 and I think it is because that they're dealing with a ton of injuries. That's why. And there's very little you can do. You know, when you when you think about your 40 man roster going into a season is very little you can do at this point in the season to change the guys that are playing here. Now, you can you can add a Billy McKinney. You could add a Jake Bowers. Yeah, you can bring up a Johnny Preto. These are the things that every team has to do through the season. And you're trying to keep your head above water until everybody else comes back until you get your full complement of players. And let's face it, this team is led by the best baseball player, maybe the second best baseball player in the entire league. And when he's not in the lineup, they're a different team. Sure. So I I understand the frustration of the fans. Of course, I mean, I'm a fan myself of a number of teams around here, and I'm frust- I get frustrated just like they do. 
But I also try to be realistic and understand what the situation is at hand. The Mets, they have players that are not executing. They have players that are overpaid and are not living up to their contracts. The Yankees, I could say that probably about maybe two players on this team. When I look at this team and I look at what their outfield looks like, look what their DH looked like last night, who the, who was pitching on the team, the fact that they've beaten Seattle two in a row now, and they are above 500, and they're still very much in the mix for the playoffs, whether it be wild card or even, you know, division. You never know. We have to. We still have to get to the second half of the season. Sure, I, I know, but I mean, we talk about reality, and there's two sides of reality. There's reality where you're explaining, yes, Aaron Judge isn't there, and yes, they are still above 500, and they're still in a place to in a, in a playoff position for a wild card, and all that stuff is reality. But it's also reality that. The Yankees are staring up at the Baltimore Orioles and the Tampa Bay Rays. And the last time we saw them in the playoffs, they got swept by a team they could never beat. So, I, I, yes, there are, there are two realities. And it's, it's which one you choose to really look at. And I'm not going to blame any Yankee fan that is upset with the way things have gone this year. And it's okay to be. I mean, just because Aaron Judge got hurt in a freak accident doesn't mean that the fan base can't be upset about that and say, well, there's injuries and there's that's an excuse there. I mean, it pisses everybody off that he's not able to play. I mean, it's so silly that Dodger Stadium is built that way and he ended up crashing through the fence and hurting himself. So I, the, the frustration of the fans is going to be there, and that's what you want as an owner. The last thing you want is for your fan base to be sitting around apathetic that mm -hmm. you're sort of spinning your wheels and you're looking up at two teams that shouldn't be better than you. I'll, I'll tell you one thing. You, you know, you talk about a team with a $340 million payroll who has got 40 losses, one of four teams in the National League that has 40 losses. Oh, now, they're, at the, least 40 they're losses. the worst. Trust me. I'm I mean, not. I mean, you compare them. And that and that, but it, salary, that shouldn't no. be the standard, though. You I, shouldn't I, be comparing the Mets and the A. The Mets are a joke. We know they're a joke. They're a joke this year. It's pathetic. I mean, they just get worse and worse and worse. I'm, I'm not trying. And you know what? The, the Yankees have earned uh, the. I'm going to say earned the right again. Uh, They've earned the right to not be compared to the Mets. That, that I mean, come on, stop. I mean, but, it's, but, it's just but, ridiculous. But the point is, like, I hear, I hear the the angst. I hear the angry fan base i understand that both teams are underplaying what you would have thought going into the season especially with the the teams that are in front of them in their own division I, I i get all that stuff but i'm just telling you watching this yankee game last night and watching guys like mckinney and bowers and brito come out and do their thing i mean that that i, I don't know what to tell you that's that's what is was offered to them i like they have Think about what their outfield has looked like for the last until before Harrison Bader came back. Yeah, the, the, sure. You but, had Isaiah, Isaiah Kiner Falefa playing center field. I mean, they've they've done a nice job to keep their heads above water. That's, yes, and that's what they're doing. They're treading yeah. water is what they're doing, and they're and they're and they're still winning. I they mean, are. They, listen, they're winning more than they're losing. And we're not even halfway through the season. Yeah, and I'm not, I, trust me, I'm not slamming the Yankees at all this year. I mean, they, they're the only ones that are giving us hope in this baseball season at all. They're going to be talking about the playoffs come October around here. Um, but I still think that Hal Steinbrenner should have a little bit more oh. of an understanding about why the fan base would be upset. That's I, all oh, that I'm okay, saying. Okay. That's they, all I'm saying. They also have the second highest payroll. You want to say Donaldson and Judge have been massive disappointments. I'm right there with you. I'm right there with you. Uh, great injuries, ineffectiveness, you know, strikeouts, uh, you know, can't come up big in big spot. I, I, get, I, I get all of it. I hear all of it. I mean, and, and I would have to say maybe with, I don't know what Glaber was doing on the base path last night. I don't know if he thought there were two out and he just ran into a double play, which they never really explained. You know what I mean? I mean they're trying to dance around it. And to me, if that if, if it's a mental lapse is what if, happened. If that's there. another mental lapse, yeah. yeah. I mean, if you're Aaron Boone, I mean, I don't know. You got to sit. You got to sit his ass down, and you got to say enough of this. Yeah. I mean, if if in fact that was the case, I don't know. I did. They, I did. They didn't really explain it much last night, and I didn't read anything about it this morning yet. So I have no idea. But that 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 kind of thing can't. Can't allow that thing to happen if, in fact, that was the case. Sure. And, and maybe Jerry has some uh, sound 
from somebody after the game last night about their base running gaffe. But well, to me, if it's from Aaron Boone, we're not going to hear it because we have banned him from the program. Well, maybe it's Gleyber Torres. Uh, may, yeah, maybe. Maybe he'll explain himself. Um, but, yes, I, I do think that there is there is hope with the Yankees, especially when, when Aaron Judge, and not an if, but when he comes back and it'll be good again, that, that this in this American League, you know, they should be able to be right in the mix. And I know Tampa has been great. And I know the Orioles are playing above their heads and I know the Astros are the Astros, but the, the Yankees are healthy and Garrett Cole is continuing to be the dominant self that he has been. I mean, they're going to have a real opportunity again. Look, they have the one of the best, not the best uh, uh, bullpen in the league. They have a bona fide ace who takes the ball every five days and goes out there and gives them a chance to win. They're missing the best player in baseball that when he is in that lineup, it's a completely different set of circumstances. And I'm I'm not a Yankee fan. I'm just trying to look at this thing realistically that we are in June and we have a gazillion games to go. I'm not saying that, you know, it's it's you know, it's still early or any of that other, but we're not even at the halfway point yet. Yeah, true. We're and, close, but we're close. But I'll, I'll counter with this. At the end of the season last year, when the Yankees got swept by the Astros, the uh, Brian Cashman and Hal Steinberg were coming out saying, and it was Brian Cashman specifically said, you would have thought that we wouldn't have made the playoffs with the fan reaction that we had. So it, there's a pattern of the Yankees feeling like they've done a better job than the fan base is feeling like they're doing. Yeah, there's always going to be a loud, discerning, you know, upset fan base you know, regarding players and player decisions. And Brian salaries Cashman sucks. And salaries. And you take two of the salaries. Like I, I, like I would say you take Scherzer's salary and you take, uh, I don't know, Lindor's salary. And then you compare that to the Stanton salary and the Donaldson salary. You say, there are your guys right there. They're, they're your problem child. Yeah. You know, when it comes to, when it comes to, especially when it comes to offense. Sure. Well, maybe not so much defense. Defense is important, of course. We all understand that. But everybody wants to see offense from these guys. And they're not seeing anything. Yeah, Stanton and Donaldson, the money that they're making, the production that they have gotten from them overall is just not acceptable. Right, so I'd be upset, too, if I were a Yankee fan about those two players. Yeah. For sure. Uh huh. Well, it's also, you know, results that they've had. I mean, they, they didn't feel like they had a shot against the team that won the World Series last year. And I would also say I'm frustrated with uh, Rizzo right now, and, and Rizzo's frustrated with himself. Sure. I mean, I, I, I totally understand the feelings, the negative feelings towards a lot of these guys, but I also understand that, man, you gave three hundred and sixty million dollars to the second best baseball player in a league, you know what? You know, and he's not there, and that yeah. is a huge hole in the lineup because it basically makes it easier for everybody else. Yeah, I, I think that both fan bases, the Mets and the Yankees, went into this year saying, "All right, how are we going to be better than last year? How are we going to beat these teams that beat us?" And neither team right now has given the fan base to uh, anything to believe that, you know, especially the Mets. I mean, the, the Mets are not better, but the Yankees still could be better than they were last year. That So that still is a possibility. And I think that's what the fan base wants to see. They want to see the team completely healthy. They want to see them go on a roll and they want to believe that they can be better than they were the year before, which is a feeling that we are not going to have for the rest of the year with the Mets. I'm just telling you on this day, what is this? Uh, the 22nd of June, I'm telling you that they will they want once they get hold they'll be better they will be better than they are I mean like right now they're a good team but they'll be better once they have Aaron Judge in that lineup I'm telling you you watch they'll they'll reel off 10 wins I'm telling you they're that they're that good when I watch the Mets it's a totally different set of circumstances yeah the pitching stinks uh they, they, they like I told you they use 24 pitches this Tyler McGill I mean one game he can go five innings and look like he's the next coming. And then the next game, he gets banged around and bombed, you know, two, two innings in. Yeah, pathetic. I've seen enough of him. I've seen enough of a lot of these guys. Leon, Nagosik, Tyler McGill, David Peterson. I've just seen, I've seen enough of them. But there's no replacements at this that, point. That's the point. There are no replacements for either of these teams. Yeah. Until the trade deadline gets here. And then what? The Mets might be sellers. If you keep going down this road, you might be selling. All right, Boomer and Gio. You sell Marte. You can sell um, Canna. You can yeah. sell those two. David I mean, Robertson. David Robertson, maybe. Uh, Adam Adovino. Guys in the bullpen would be right there, probably first. I mean, uh, maybe Omar Narvaez, if you're loving Francisco Alvarez, which we all do. Maybe, I don't know. Guys like that. You know, I mean, there's there's options. There are. 
Now, I don't know what you're going to get back as far as prospects in those situations, but, I mean, if you're completely out of it, Billy Epler's got to think that way. He had to improve the club. 